All right, folks, thanks, and welcome to another edition of our free training webinars. <clears throat> Today's webinar is going to be on setting user default preferences inside of Abacus Law. Uh, just by show of hands real quick, can you just click your little hand raise button and let me know that you can see my Abacus Law program okay? All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And since you responded to that, I'll assume you can hear me as well. So I'll go ahead and lower those hands. Uh, let's see. So you should be able to see my Abacus Law program here. You should be able to see my mouse moving around. Uh, you'll also notice that you are muted. That is by design. So if you have any questions, please use the chat box. Please use the questions box uh, there in your GoToMeeting window uh, so that I can address as many of those as possible in the time that we have. Uh, we do have a short time window, so I want to try and get as much information in there as possible. Uh, if there are any questions that I don't get to uh, before our, our time runs out today, uh, we will follow up by email uh, with everybody. So we actually log those questions and the email addresses. So uh, we'll be sure to uh, follow up with you by email. It will actually be me who follows up with you. Uh, and if you have any questions really in general on how-to items in the program, um, you can always email training at abacusnext.com. Um, we'll be able to respond to you there. And if you have any webinar-related uh, feedback or questions about the topics uh, we talk about, uh, please feel free to email webinars at abacusnext.com. That includes suggestions. If you have any future webinar suggestions, we'd love to hear that. We basically get all of our webinar topics from user feedback. Uh, so please give us your suggestions, and we'll try and work those in uh, to uh, upcoming webinars. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive in here. Abacus Law, uh, user preferences. The nice thing about this system is you can really customize the program to act and react uh, on a user-by-user -user basis, on a practice area-by-practice area basis. So that makes um, the use of the program and the efficiency of the program really in line with what the law firm's practice areas are. Okay, so for instance, you know, maybe I'm a law firm and I have a group of attorneys that do immigration, and I have a group of attorneys that do divorce, okay, that do family law. Obviously, two very different practice areas, right? So what we would probably want to do is we'd want to set some defaults for our divorce attorneys that are specific to maybe their divorce cases, like the screens that they see, uh, the calendar appointments that they see, uh, different things like that. And then we'd have, you know, similar defaults set for our immigration attorneys who maybe just want to see the immigration cases and just want to see the events associated with their immigration type appointments, okay? So those are all things that can be done inside of this program. Now, there are a lot of different user preferences that you can set defaults for. We don't have time to go over all of them today, but I definitely invite you to take a look at the reference guide, uh, snoop around in the program, and, uh, and, you know, see what you can find out there. And, again, if you have any questions about anything that you find, just email training at abacusnext.com, and we will uh, get you squared away. So when it comes to user preferences, the first place I usually tell people to go is under the File Setup menu, okay? Under File Setup, you should have, as the very first choice there, a little option that says User Preferences. Now, if you're an administrator or if you're new to the program, okay, this is one of the first places you should go when you get access to Abacus Law, okay? And you should tell your users to do this as well. They should all go into their user preferences and make sure that they have things set up the way, the way that they want them set up. Notice in the top left corner here, it says user preferences for, and then it has a user code, okay? Those are my initials. So what that means is anything I change inside of this window is only going to affect this user, okay? And that's a standard throughout the program. That's the whole purpose of a user preference. It's not a global change. It's not firm-wide. This is an individual user-by-user -user setting, all right? So first thing you should always have your users do when they get into the system for the very first time if they're new to Abacus is go into this user preferences window, 
okay, when they're logged into the program, make sure some of this personal information is accurate, all right? Is their name spelled correctly? Is their login ID correct? Is their email address correct? And if they're an attorney, is their bar number accurate? Okay, those are little things you definitely want to make sure are set correctly for each of your users. Because some of these different fields tie into form generation, they tie into the email integration features with Outlook, so you gotta make sure that things like that are accurate. Another little option in here that your users can uh, decide on is the startup window. Okay, the startup window is the default window that automatically opens every time you log into the Abacus program. So for instance, mine is set to organizer, okay? So if I were to close out of my program right now and double click on my icon and reopen it, what's going to happen is it's going to obviously launch my main program window, but it's also going to launch my daily organizer, which is normal because that's a preference that I've set and maybe it's a window that I'm constantly working in. Okay, so because I'm constantly working in that window, I want it to automatically open for me anytime I launch my Abacus program. You know, our calendars nowadays are usually very important to us. We usually live and die by them. So looking at that immediately when you log into the program um, is a great way to see what you have going on that day. So again, your users can set that as a preference. Now, if I go back into my user preferences here, I can change that startup window. Okay, I have a few different options. I can change it to the staff calendar. I can change it to our today's documents list. Maybe if I know that I'm immediately always going in and searching for cases, I can open it to my matters database if I need to. Okay, but they get to decide which window they want to automatically open. Now, if they don't want a secondary window to automatically open for them, just choose main menu. Okay, whenever main menu is selected as the startup window, then all you get is this big window here, okay? The main Abacus Law start screen, all righty? So you definitely wanna have them check that out, make the decision on their startup windows. Now, another big thing that um, is uh, geared towards you know, individual preferences is the appearance, okay? So we have a secondary tab there called appearance. And mainly what we're wanting to look at here is this top left section that says screens, okay? Because if you've ever used Abacus before, uh, and even if you're new to the program, you've probably been in there snooping around, you've got name screens for your contacts, you've got matter screens for your cases. So the screen that you see when you open up a case or the default uh, screen that you see for a contact, that could vary depending upon the type of contact. It could vary depending upon the type of case. So again, if I go back to my scenario of my law firm has immigration attorneys and we have family law attorneys, well, if I'm one of those family law attorneys, then I may want to set my default matter screen to divorce or something like that. Okay, so that way, whenever I create a new matter, okay, or I open up a new case, it's automatically going to assume that it's a divorce case, unless I tell it otherwise, all right? So if I'm setting that screen as my default matter screen, then that's one less click I have to make when it's time for me to create that new matter, okay? It's gonna automatically do that for me, all right? So a little, and, and then the same concept applies, you know, for our name screens and for our event screens and things like that. So you wanna tweak those you know, default settings to be, you know, more in line with what each individual user wants. All right, now we'll come back to this a little bit uh, in just a sec. Another big thing, defaults, is our printers, okay? Whether, uh, if you have Abacus Law installed on your local network, this is pretty important because, you know, usually in an office there are multiple printers, right? Somebody may have a printer in there, uh, you know, specific office versus the printer that's out in the lobby, okay? So we want to make sure that we are setting our default printers here on this printing slash email tab, okay? Notice my printer 
for my reports is set to my Canon here. Okay, that's the one that just sits right next to my desk. I can also set that for my label printer and maybe for my envelope printers as well if they are separate printers. Okay, but all you have to do to set your default printers for Abacus is just click on that little button and that will open up your list of default printers on your network. So if you don't see the list of default printers here in the list here, okay, that means that your computer can't see the printer. Okay, so you need to contact your IT person and make sure that is set up correctly. All right, but you just choose the printer that you want to set as the default, click done, and there you go. Now that user has set their default printer preference. All right, so now when I click done, that's saved, all right? So remember, the three keys in, in user preferences that we want our users to look at when they first get into the system is underneath our file setup menu, go into user preferences, make sure that our personal information is accurate on our first user info tab, make sure we have the proper default screens assigned, for names, events, and matters, and make sure that our default printer is set appropriately for our reports, our labels, and our envelopes. All righty. Now, for my matters, I'm going to set that back to my standard. Let's see here. Actually, we'll leave it divorce. Why not? Okay, and then don't forget to click done. All right, and that is going to save your changes. Now, one thing um, that people do, uh, or actually we get questions about a lot, is the font size, okay? Like for instance, if I am uh, looking at a specific case here, okay, this is a personal injury case that I'm uh, opening up here, a vehicle accident, uh, and, be and this screen is actually pretty involved, quite a few different, um, quite a few different fields and things like that. So sometimes we do get questions about the text size. Okay, can we make the text size bigger? You know, everybody's eyes are different. Everybody's uh, monitors are different sizes. So if you do need to change the default uh, printer, uh, or I'm sorry, the default uh, uh, font size for your screens and your browse windows, you can do that underneath user preferences as well. All right, go to your appearance tab and in the bottom right corner, you have a font section. You can change the fonts for labels, input fields, notes, and browse windows. Okay, and all you do is just click the button and you can choose uh, from, you know, one of the appropriate fonts, one of the appropriate styles, and one of the appropriate sizes. Don't get too crazy with the fonts. I beg you, leave it the standard, you know, Arial or Times or, uh, you know, Calibri or something like that. Don't don't use Algerian. Uh, that's going to make your text look really funky on the screen. Uh, so just you know, leave it set to a standard there. But you know, the size is the big thing that most people uh, end up wanting to change. Alrighty. And again, when you click done, that saves your changes. All right. So that's how you're going to do it from default user preferences. And again, remember, that's an individual user by user action. Um, another place that we usually want to set some sort of default is in our browse windows, specifically our matters browse window. Okay, so if we click the matters button on the toolbar, that is going to open up our list of active cases. Okay, or at least for me, it's opening up a list of active cases. Notice in the top right corner, it has the word open next to this little button that says query. Okay, I have a default query set for my matters browse window that only shows me open active cases. All right, that way I don't have to scroll through old closed cases. Okay, queries are basically filters. Okay, it's just a filter of what you're seeing visually on your screen. So I've used my open query because I only want to see active cases. I don't want to see closed cases when I'm looking at this list. That's a very common default query for people to use. All right. Now, if you're a larger firm that has a lot more attorneys, you may want to dive down even one step deeper 
and make that open cases and then specify a specific attorney, okay? You can do that as well. You just need to choose the appropriate query, okay? If you click that query button, you'll notice there is one, uh, an option in there called the query manager, okay? The query manager is your list of specific filters, okay? Notice I have one in here called SH. This is cases for SH only. That's me. That's my attorney code. So what I'm going to do is I would choose that query. I would click done. And now I'm going to only see cases assigned to SH. Okay. And if I always want my matters browse window to open to this query by default, and I can just click my little query drop down menu again and notice the option that says set current query as default. Okay, now when I do that, anytime I open this window, it's going to open to that query. Okay, so now I have eliminated the need to scroll through a bunch of cases that aren't even assigned to me. All right. It doesn't mean you can't clear this query and search for cases that aren't assigned to you. You can do that. All you have to do is just click this button again and choose the option for clear current query. Okay, when I clear that query out, now I'm seeing every single case in my system. But remember, this is about what is most dominant of a preference. If 90% of the time I only want to see cases assigned to me, then that should be my default, okay? That should be my default. It's the one-off scenarios, you know, that 10% that of the time that I should have to change my setting for, okay? Because that means we only have to do it 10% of the time, right, as opposed to 90%. So that is another way to set your browse window defaults, like what you see. Just choose a query from your query manager, Okay, you'll probably have a ton of different queries in here that you can choose from. You can see I have a, I have a lot. Um, if, if you're unsure of how to create these queries, we do do a lot of different trainings on how to, you know, manipulate your filters and stuff like that, how to create query expressions. So you can get pretty elaborate with these queries, you know, like show me cases only for, only assigned to SH for 2019. You know, we can do things like that. Uh, so if you if you have a need to understand how to build queries more, please let us know. Uh, we'll have some webinars coming up on that. We'll also do uh, some additional training on that for you as well. Okay. But you, once you find the query that you want, like for instance, the open query, this is a query that actually comes with your system. Okay. So everybody on today's webinar has this query that they can choose. Okay. Choose that one. Now. I'm setting my open query as my default. So anytime that user opens up their matters browse window, they're only going to see open cases. Okay. And again, you know, that's an individual user preference. So what query I have set up here in my browse window doesn't affect my colleague Sally down the hall. Sally may have a completely different uh, query set for her cases. Okay, for what she wants to see. All right, so hopefully everybody's wrapping their heads around that. Um, queries are a great, powerful way to uh, manipulate what data you see. So I really advise uh, learning more about queries. Check your reference guide, check the videos that we have online, um, and, uh, and learn more about that. Or schedule some training with us. We can teach you how to use them. Okay, so the browse windows, big, big popular place to set visual defaults. Okay, the other big place uh, that people want to set defaults is on their calendar. Okay, when I come into the office and I open up my calendar, you know, if I've got 20 attorneys in my office, I don't want to see all people's events. I probably want to just see, at least right out of the gate, what do I have going on, okay? Now, that is a function of, or, or that is a uh, product of what your job function is most likely at the firm. So if I'm the office manager, I probably do want to see what everybody has going on, right? If I'm a paralegal that supports three or four different attorneys, then I probably want to see what I have going on and what those attorneys have going on. 
If I'm just a you know an attorney, then I probably just by default just want to see what I have going on, right? Those are all things that you can do with your calendar. All right. Notice when I opened up my daily organizer here, in the top right corner, it has the words all people. So that means we are looking at what every single person in the firm has going on today. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any appointments uh, today, so that's probably not good for our revenue. But we do have a lot of reminders, a lot of things to do, uh, some callbacks that need to get made. Okay. So if I want to filter this down to just see what I have going on, I can click this little Who button, and I can choose from my list of Who codes. So I would just choose my Who code, click Done. Now I'm only seeing events assigned to me, okay? Notice how those callbacks disappeared? I lost about five callbacks because I actually only have one, all right? So whatever you see up in the top right corner, whatever text that says, that is whose appointment you are viewing for that day, or I should say whose events you are viewing because some of them may not be appointments, okay? And again, you can do multiple people. What if I click this Who button and I say I want to see what Scott has going on and what Corey has going on? Okay, I can click those check boxes. No problem. Click, click multiple check boxes. Click Done. Now I'm seeing both SH and Corey. Okay, so whatever you see up here, that is the default. All right. Now, or I'm, I'm sorry, whatever you see up here, that is whose events you are looking at. Now, if you want to set a default view, then what you need to do is click the little gear, okay? See our little settings gear right here on the right? Kind of looks like a little, uh, an old uh, uh, ship's wheel. If you click that, see how we have a default section for our who code, okay? This little window, this is how you set your default calendar setup. So if I want, you know, my calendar to always open to just me, Scott Heist, SH, I just click this Who button, and that opens up this little window. And in this window, I can choose my, my, uh, my codes, okay, the Who code I want. So I would just choose Scott here. Whoops, there we go. And then click Done. Okay, click Done again. And now any time I open it up, See how it's open into mine? Okay, so that's, again, that's a default that we're setting for our calendar view. We don't have to click and target a specific person. It's going to automatically open to the one we want to see 90% of the time, right? And then for that 10% of the time when we want to see what somebody else is going on, well, then we can just click that Who button, and we have all these different codes that we can look at. We can even set it to all people by just clicking the top button, set to all people. See that? All right, but my default again is Scott, okay, because I'm going to go in and set that. I cleared it the last time, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set that just like we did before. SH, click done, click done, click done, and there we go, okay? So now when you open it up, there we go, okay? Also, another thing it does is when you are calendaring your actual appointments, it will default the WHO code. See that? That's one less thing I have to type in when I am calendaring an event. I don't need to put in my WHO code. I don't need to put in my WHAT code. Okay, it defaulted both of those for me. The WHAT code default also is in our little settings section right underneath the who. See that? So I can default both of those, and now whenever I create that appointment, it's going to default those for me. One less thing, two less things I have to type, assuming that the circumstance, you know, applies. All righty? So that is, you know, another very important uh, default setting that a lot of people like to use. Now, obviously, you know, defaults are there to just guide you, right? Again, it all comes down to, you know, what do we do most of the time? 
right? Most of the time I'm calendaring my own appointments. Most of the time I only want to see my cases in the list, right? Most of the time I'm printing to this printer. Obviously, there are times when you're not going to use the default. So you just change it kind of on the fly whenever you need to for those, you know, those one-off times. All right. So hopefully you found that informative. Um, if there are any questions about any other uh, areas of the program that you uh, want to know about defaults on, those are the three uh, major areas, user preferences, browse windows, and the calendar. So we'll go ahead and open it up uh, for questions, and uh, we'll try and get as many of those answered as we can. Remember, go ahead and use your questions box, okay, uh, or the chat box there in GoToMeeting if you do have a question. Uh, and if you can't think of any questions now, no worries. We're going to send out a recording uh, of this webinar to you, uh, so you'll be able to uh, listen to it. And if any questions arise, then just email us, and we'll get you squared away. Okay, so let's give it a minute here just to look for some questions. Okay, so I do have one question about the browse windows. So the browse windows, um, is, is basically the question was, can you set you know, a similar default query in like names, events, and, and other browse windows? The answer is yes, of course. Um, all you have to do is just open up that browse window again, and you've got that same button. You can see that we showed before, you've got that, uh, that, that query button there um, that you can, uh, you know, alter if you need to, okay? Um, so it works exactly the same way. Same way for events, okay? See, we have that query button there as well. Um, even in things like the documents, you know, browse and stuff like that, you've got anywhere you see that query button, um, uh, you can set a default query. That's why it's really important for you to become familiar with how to build queries, especially if you're an administrator, in the Abacus program, because chances are, if you're an administrator, you're going to have the attorneys and other people coming to you and saying, hey, I want a report that shows me this, or I want my browse window to show me this, okay? That means you are going to have to know how to build queries. So make sure you take those query training classes um, or view the, uh, you know, view the online uh, videos that we have in our, our resource center. Um, and for those of you who have never been to the resource center, all you do is just go to abacusnext.com and click on the little button on the right side that says resources, and you'll see training videos in the drop-down menu. All right, that was a good question. Any other questions out there before I let you go? We'll give it one more minute to see if any other questions come in. Okay, I don't see any other questions, so I appreciate everybody attending. If something pops up uh, as you're using the program, again, please do not hesitate to contact us. Just email training at abacusnext.com, and we will respond to you as soon as possible. Again, my name is Scott with Abacus Next, and uh, we hope to see you again on the next webinar. Have a great day.